Hello and welcome to this video on the IUPAC nomenclature of ethers. So in this section we are going to look at how we are going to name ethers. So first of all let's begin by understanding what ethers are. Now ethers are oxygen bonded to two carbon atoms. On one side you have one alkyl group, on the other side you have the other alkyl group or alkynyl group or alkynyl group. Basically there are two organic groups at the two ends having carbon atoms attached to oxygen. These are ethers. Now how do we name these ethers? What we do is assuming that one of the R groups, R or R prime, is simple and when I say simple I'm going to say it could be methyl, it could be ethyl, it could be methyl, it could be ethyl, it could be propyl, it could even be isopropyl for that matter but there are very simple groups whose names are very typical. If that is the case then we would name one of them as alkoxy. Let's say for example R prime and O are together called alkoxy and this R is the alkane. Now how do we devise and how do we decide for that matter which is alkoxy and which is alkane? And that's pretty simple. If out of the two carbon atoms, the two groups R and R prime, if let us say R has more carbon atoms than R prime, then R is the alkane and L prime, R prime is going to be called alkoxy. Now if the number of carbon atoms are same in both but the two groups are different then the least branched, the least branched is the alkane and the more branched would be the alkoxy. So if I have let's say the alkane part like this and I have got an ethyl linkage then we have to take the longest chain including the carbon that contains the ether group. So that is very important that we must understand which is the carbon having the alkoxy group. So <coughs> if this is the carbon containing the alkoxy group then we must include this carbon in the numbering and we must give least possible number to this particular carbon atom. So if once we see some examples I think it will be more clear. Ethers are R O R prime, one group let's say R is named alkane while the other O R prime is named alkoxy substituent. In unsymmetrical cases however, the longer chain carbon alkyl group is the alkane part. If carbons are same, the lesser branched alkyl group is the alkane. The name of the ether is alkoxy alkane, let's check out some. So how do we decide the naming of this? Now based on this rule I would want you to pause the video now and name it as per what you deem fit and then play the video to check your answer. Now on one side of O I have got one carbon. On the other side of O I have got two carbons. So one carbon versus two carbon. The so two carbon is more. So remember we need to take the longer carbon chain alkyl group as the alkane part. So this is the alkane part and this becomes alkoxy. So alkoxy, now how do we get alkoxy? We removed A and E from alkane and replaced it with OXY, alkoxy. So this is methane remove the A and E and put OXY, it becomes methoxy. So this is going to be alkoxy alkane, methoxy and this is ethane. 
So this is methoxyethane. Let's try this one. Pause the video, name it and then play it back. On one side I've got two carbon atoms, on the other side I also have two carbon atoms, both the same, doesn't matter which is alkoxane, which is alkane. So it is ethoxyethane. Now let's try this one. On one side I have three carbon atoms. On one side I have only one carbon atom. So this is the alkoxy part. But when it comes to naming this alkane, you simply can't say propane because you also have to indicate on which carbon this alkoxy is attached. For example, if I have a three carbon chain like this and I've got OME attached here, then this is carbon one, two, three. But the OME could as well have been attached here instead of here, in which case it becomes two methoxy. So you need to number this alkane part and this is the way we number it. We try to give the lowest possible number to the carbon that contains the alkoxy part. So this is one methoxy propane. Try this. On one side I've got three carbon atoms. On one side I have one carbon atom. So this is the methoxy. So it is methoxy, but this is propane, but you know it is attached to the middle carbon. So numbering the longest carbon chain containing the methoxy group is like this. So this is 2 methoxy propane. All right, try this one. On one side, I've got three carbon atoms. On the other side, also have three carbon atoms. And according to the rule, if carbon atoms are same, the lesser branched alkyl group is alkane. So the alkane is this one. And this is the alkoxy and this is, is isopropyl group. So it is isopropoxy. And again, since this is a propane, we need to number it. So we are going to number it like this. Giving the lowest possible number to the carbon that has the alkoxy group. 1 isopropoxy propane. Now, this kind of a numbering is only possible if one of the alkyl group is a simple group. This type of naming is the common method when one of the alkyl group is simple and small, while the other is complex containing multiple substituents or multiple bonds or even pro probably rings. Of course, the rings will do a little bit later in the next video. So, the third point is the alkoxy group gets the priority than any alkyl or halogen in numbering. Say for example, name this. Pause, play it back and then check the name. Now on one side I have got 1, 2, 3, 3 carbon atoms. On the other I have got 1, 2, 3, 4 carbon atoms. So this part is the alkane and this is the alkoxy and since it's a three carbon chain linear chain it is it is based on the propyl group it's propoxy and again how do we number it we make sure this carbon gets one this fellow gets one so it's one two three four so this is propoxy this is methyl Methyl comes before in naming. So it's 2-methyl, 1-propoxy butane. Try this. Well, we know it's methoxy. Number it. 1-methoxy. 3-methyl-butane because methoxy comes before methyl in alphabetical order. Try a little bit more complicated. Pause the video. Write the name, check the answer. Now, we need to do, first of all, uh, 
this obviously is only one carbon atom so that's methoxy that's pretty simple on the other side you have uh, such a long chain of carbon atoms this is such a long chain of carbon atoms so this is the alkane part so how do we number it number it from the top because we need to give this carbon the lowest possible number so we're going to number it like this 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 7 so that makes it 3 methoxy and 5 methyl so 3 methoxy 5 methyl heptane now this is the method of naming if one of the r groups is a very simple group it can be named in a very simple way but if both become extremely complex both become very branched both have multiple substituents then this type of naming is not used we use a different type of naming if none of the r groups is simple and contains complex chains with or without multiple bonds or complex rings then the naming is done as an oxa o x a substituent let's see the rule again <clears throat> the ether is named by including the oxygen atom in the length of the carbon chain its location is identified by the position number the numbering of the chain follows previous rules lowest numbers etc etc now let's uh, 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 understand this a little bit suppose you have an ether like this lot of substituents attached something like this very complex so what we do is we start numbering it from one of the ends either from this is one or assuming this is one and of course the same rules are followed lowest local rule etc once you start numbering them let's say this is one suppose you start let's say numbering from the right side this is one this is 2 this is 3 this is 4 5 6 you have to number oxygen also 7 8 9 10 11 12 so now what you need to understand is that you got to write all the substituents all the substituents in the end the parent becomes p oxa alkane where p is the number of oxygen that is 7 so in this case it is 7 oxa and before this you have all the prefixes i'm just writing the parent now 7 oxa the number last number is 12 do decane now as such if you observe since we have given the number to oxygen also actually there are only 11 carbons but we still write do decane because of the last number 12 so the ether is named by including the oxygen atom in the length of the carbon chain its location is identified by the position number and the oxa prefix note the numbering of the chain follows previous rules lowest number for substituents multiple bonds alphabetical order of substituents etc so let's name a couple of them and then probably we'll be able to understand this thing much better so name this pause write the name and check your answer now here we have to take the longest carbon chain including oxygen which happens to be pretty simple now it is this okay so this is the parent chain now where do i number it from i have to number it from the right side because when i say one as this then i get the first substituent at two whereas i number it from the left side my first substituent becomes three so i got to number it from the right side so number it 5 6 7 8 9 10 so the parent is 6 oxa and the last number is 10 decane this is the parent and now put all the prefixes before this all the methyls and the chloros and everything else so based on that you can clearly decide it is 7 chloro 2 3 4 8 tetramethyl 6 oxa decane 7 chloro 2 3 4 8 tetramethyl 6 oxa decane and if you haven't followed this go back 
go back to the structure try and get the rules again and then name it and do it till you are able to get this one and then go for the next example now this is a little bit more complicated i've used double bonds and triple bonds on this so before you go to this one the previous one should be very clear to you all right let's look at this one if you want pause the video and check the answer and then come back so which is the parent chain the parent chain obviously is the one that includes o as well as maximum number of multiple bonds which means it should swing like this i hope it's going to be like this yeah because then you need maximum carbon atoms yeah now you could have gone up also i believe 1 2 3 no 1 2 so this is perfectly fine so the numbering obviously has to be done from the right side because we want to give the double bonds the lowest number just like the way you do with alkenes and alkynes so this is the numbering remember we number the o also so first write the parent what is the parent the parent is 7 oxa now there are two double bonds and it is 13 so 7 oxa tri deca 5 8 7 oxa tri deca 5 8 di n 2 in right so this is the parent itself and then you put all the substituents you got a nice o propyl and you got ethyl and you got methyls lot of methyls so let's get the name here the name would be this 10 ethyl 9 isopropyl uh because ethyl has to come first to so 10 ethyl 9 isopropyl 4 6 8 11 12 pentamethyl and this is the parent remember 7 oxa tri deca 5 8 di n 2 in so this is how we name complex ethers please keep going back to the video again and again to ensure that you are able to understand this thing very clearly I hope this video helps you in understanding the IUPAC nomenclature of ethers. Thanks for watching.